Hello, good morning. How are you? I am teacher Cherry Ann Angyo. Today, we will be learning about the parts of a simple paragraph. You will be learning here the parts and characteristics of the parts of a paragraph that enable you to identify each in a given paragraph. This module has different activities that will help you understand the lesson, which will eventually develop your writing skills. You are then encouraged to actively engage yourself in exploring the module. Read the topic discussions and do the learning activities provided. This is the module in English 7 entitled Parts of a Simple Paragraph, authored by Ma'am Rowena Paiuan. After the lesson, you are expected to master the desired learning competency and to achieve the following learning objectives. First, recognize the parts of a simple paragraph. Second, know the characteristics of each part of a simple paragraph. Third, appreciate the importance of knowing the parts of a paragraph. In our previous lessons, you have learned the different kinds of a paragraph. First is the narrative paragraph that tells a story. Second is the descriptive paragraph which aims to describe something or someone. Third is the expository paragraph which aims to inform the reader. And lastly, the persuasive paragraph which aims to persuade the reader. Now, let's continue discussing our lesson. What is a paragraph anyway? It is a group of sentences that tell about the main idea. And there are three parts of a simple paragraph. First part, topic sentence or main idea. What is this? It tells the reader what the paragraph is about or its main idea. It may either be expressed or implied. If it is expressed, it may occur at any part of the paragraph, but usually it is found in the beginning of a paragraph. If it is implied, then you need to read the whole paragraph to get the main idea. Okay, so let's differentiate what is an express topic sentence to an implied topic sentence. Express topic sentence. Topic sentence at the beginning of a paragraph. We have here an example. Snakes come in different shapes and sizes. Some snakes, such as tree snakes, have long and thin bodies. This helps them blend into their environment. Other snakes, such as sea snakes, are thinner from side to side than from front to back. This shape helps them move through the water. Some snakes are even short and stubby. Okay. So in this example of a paragraph, we can see that our topic is at the beginning of the paragraph, which is snakes come in different shapes and sizes. Okay. Now let's move on. Topic sentence at the end of a paragraph. Here is an example. Streams of melting ice and snow tunnel through the glaciers the same way that the water from the faucet melts its way through an ice cube. Water from the surface drips down through cracks, hollowing out the tunnels and decorating the caves with crystal icicle. The smooth walls and floors are so glass-like that pebbles frozen six feet deep can easily be seen. Crystal clear icicles draping down from the ceiling flash blue-green as though they were carved from precious jewels instead of ice. This is how beautiful caves are formed by glaciers. In this example, our topic sentence as located at the end of the paragraph, which is, this is how beautiful caves are formed by glaciers. Okay, after discussing an expressed 
topic sentence, we have implied or unstated topic sentence. Example, have you ever seen a spider web? One web called a ladder web. It is long and narrow. Another web is called an orb web. This kind of web resembles a wheel. The implied topic sentence here is, not all spider webs look alike. Did you get it? Good. All right, now let's proceed. Topic sentence has also two parts. One, the topic, and second, the controlling idea. The topic is the subject of your paragraph, while the controlling idea limits or controls your topic to the one aspect that you want to write about. Here is an example. My sister Liz was born lucky. The topic here is my sister Liz. The controlling idea is born lucky. Okay, so that is our first part, topic sentence. We proceed to the second part, which is the supporting sentences. What is this? Okay. Supporting sentences tell more about the topic introduced in the topic sentence. Supporting sentences give the reader more facts about or examples of the topic. Example, our topic sentence is, The people in my country make a special dish from the Isaac flower. Our supporting sentences should be, Where the flower grows, Where you can buy the flower, When you eat the dish, How will you make it? And how will you eat it? The third part is the concluding sentence. What is this? Concluding sentence is the last sentence in the paragraph. This tells the reader it is the end of the paragraph. It is similar with the topic sentence. They are both general statements. Now, there are two ways to write a concluding sentence. Now, there are two ways to write a concluding sentence. What are these? First, you can say the topic sentence in different words. Second, you may summarize the main points in the paragraph. Many concluding sentences begin with one of these phrases, like, in conclusion, or in summary, examples. A normal adult usually has 32 teeth. These are classified into four kinds. The incisors, the canines, the premolars, and the molars. The incisors are the four teeth in front in both the upper and the lower set. These are followed by a pair of canines. An adult has two upper canines and two lower canines. Next are two premolars on each side for a total of four upper premolars and four lower premolars. The last three teeth on each side are called the molars. These four kinds of teeth make up an adult's 32 teeth. You can observe that our last sentence is the statement to conclude the paragraph. Okay, next example. My sister Liz was born lucky. She has a beautiful smile. When she does something bad, she smiles and my parents are not angry. She does not study hard but always has good grades. After school, she does her homework in five minutes while she watches television at the same time. In conclusion, I believe that some people are born lucky and some are not. Okay, our concluding statement this time is the last statement. Okay, that is our lesson for today. I hope you were able to understand it and you're ready to answer the activities prepared for you. In What's More, you will be presented with Activity 1, Activity 2, and Activity 3. 
along with assessment one, assessment two, and assessment three. If you have some questions, you ask the help of your parents or your guardians or siblings. You may also contact your teacher through text, call, or you can send message in Messenger. You have to answer also your post-assessment so that you will know whether you mastered the learning competency or you need to go back to the activities where you got low. Use the answer key at the back page to check your answer. This is your module on parts of a simple paragraph. I hope you will have an exciting time accomplishing the activities. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hi! Sagot ka naman. Ganyan. Magandang araw sa'yo. Malala mo ba ako? Yung guru mo sa module 1.5. Teacher Corazon Villena mula sa Alejo Impacalso Memorial National High School. Di ba? Tayo ang partner ngayon sa New Normal. Ang tinatawag natin na eskwebahayan. O, new word ko yun, ha? Believe ako sa'yo. Malakas ang pagpuporsigi mo. Maganda yan. We heal as one, di ba? Sa katatapos mong aralin, module 1, aralin 1.5, nakilala mo si Manding. Maalala mo? Sa dula na kahit hindi siya nakapagtapos ng kurso ay sinikap niyang itayo ang kanilang buhay ni Nita. Hindi siya umasa ng tulong sa kanyang ina at kanyang mga kuya na nakapagtapos ng kurso. May maayos na buhay, di tulad niya. Ngunit sa kabila ng kahirapan, ay umusbong pa rin ang matinding pananalig sa Diyos at pagmamahal sa ina. Balikan natin ang tula ni Manding sa kanyang ina. Sabayan mo akong basahin ang tula, ha? Pasko! Pasko ngayon. Sa kabi-kabilay, masaya ang lahat. Laganap ang tuwa, siglay na kasabog. Daigdig! May galak. Kaluwalhati ang pahatid ng Diyos ating nilalasap. Kaya bawat tao ang bawat kinapal, maligayang ganap. Ako, dito sa puso, pag-ibig sa Diyos lalong tumitimyas. Ngayong pusong ito, ang kayamanan kong matibay, matatag. Tanggapin mo ina, hindi maluluma. Hindi malalansay. Alam kong nakaramdam ka rin ng hinanakit sa kanyang mga kuya nung binasa mo ito. Tinitimpi mo ang iyong kaisipan sa pagiging makatotohanan ng panyayari sa dula. Totoo yun, di ba? Kung gayon, atin nang simulan ang ating aralin. Nasa aralin 1.5 pa rin tayo, Ngunit sa module 2. Tungkol ito sa mga ekspresyong nagpapahayag ng katotohanan. Ang aralin ay paglalaanan mo ng dalawang oras. Inaasahang malilinang mo ang most essential learning competency sa module na ito. Most essential learning competency. Nagagamit ang ekspresyong nagpapahayag ng katotohanan tulad ng Sa totoo, talaga, tunay, mangyari pa, ganoon nga, 
sadya, at marami pang iba. Tulad ng mga naunang module upang maging makabuluhan ang iyong pag-aaral, ipaalala ko lamang ang sumusunod. Basahin ang bawat panuto sa mga sasagutting gawain. Isagawa ang mga gawain at pagsasanay sa aralin. Bawat araw, dapat may matapos ka. Siguruhin na personal mo munang sasagutin ang mga gawain o pagsasanay. Para sa iyong pagkatuto sa MELC, narito ang inihandang mga gawain na iyong tapat at matyagasanang sasagutin. Narito ang mga gawain. Pagsusuri kung ang pahayag ay makatotohanan o opinion. Pagkilala sa mga ekspresyong nagpapahayag ng katotohanan at opinion. Paggamit sa mga ekspresyon sa pagbuo ng mga pahayag na katotohanan at opinion. Bago ka magpatuloy sa mga gawain, narito ang mahalagang kaalamang bibigyan ng puntos. Una, ano ang ekspresyong nagpapahayag ng katotohanan? Pangalawa, naihahambing ang ekspresyong nagpapahayag ng katotohanan sa mga ekspresyong nagpapahayag ng opinion. Pangatlo, paano nakatutulong ang mga ekspresyong nagpapahayag ng katotohanan sa makabuluhang gawain tulad ng pag-uulat at pananaliksi? Ano ang katotohanang pahayag? Sinasabi na ito ay nagsasaad ng ideya o pangyayari na Napatunayan at tanggap ng lahat, hindi napasusubalian o napagsisinungalingan sa ibang lugar. Ito rin ay may siyentipikong batayan gaya ng agham o siyensya. May suportang datos, may pag-aaral, pananaliksik at suportang impormasyong napatunayang Tama at mabisa para sa lahat. Kapag hinahango ang kaisipan o ideya mula sa ibang sanggunian o pananaliksik, gamitan ng mga parirala gaya ng nasa ibaba para mapatunayan ang pagiging makatotohanan nito at magiging mabisa ang iyong pahayag. So, ano yung mga iyon? Batay sa pag-aaral, totoong. Yan, dudugtungan mo yan. Mula sa mga datos na aking nakalap ay tunay na. Yung tatlong tuldok doon, ibig sabihin dudugtungan ng iyong nakalap o nakuhang datos. Ang mga patunay na aking nakalap ay Pwede rin gamitin ang ayon sa dalumhasa na patunayan na o ano ba yung napatunayan mo. Isa pa, isang mabisang pag-aaral at pagsusuri ang isinagawa kaya napatunayan. O ano yung napatunayan? Idudugtong mo dyan. Napatunayan mabisa ang, ayan, ipahayag mo kung ano ang napatunayan. At maari din ang gamitin mula sa pagbeberipika ng mga datos at impormasyon na patunayang, ano yung napatunayan? Pwede rin gamitin ito. Batay sa resulta, pinatutunayan ni, o di kaya mula kay, o di kaya sangayon sa tinutukoy na mababasa sa maaring pahina o aklat ang pwede mong idugtong doon. Ang opinion ay pananaw ng isang tao o pangkat ng mga tao na maaring hindi totoo sa iba. 
walang katiyakan o walang sapat na basihan. Karaniwang hindi suportado ng datos o sayantipikong basihan. Ilan sa mga ekspresyong ginagamit naman sa opinyong pahayag ay ang sumusunod. Naniniwala ako sapagkat ito ay opinion kaya manggagaling sa iyo. Sa aking palagay, ano yung palagay mo tungkol doon sa pahayag na yon? Ang opinion ko sa bagay na ito, yan, idudugtong mo yan. Pwede rin gamitin ang palagay ko. O di kaya, baka ang mga pangyayaring, ano yung mga pangyayaring iyon? Pwede rin ang marahil ang bagay na ito ay o ito pa, pwedeng ang mga pangyayari o di kaya sa ganang sarili, ibig sabihin ikaw yon sa iyong opinion mo. At pwede mo rin gamitin sa tingin ko. yon ang mga ginagamit natin kapag tayo ay nagpapahayag ng ating opinion. Ngunit tandaan, ang opinion ay maaring positibo o negatibo. Ang mga positibong opinion ay gumagamit din ng sumusunod. Tunay. O halimbawa, tunay nga na mapanganib ang COVID virus. O, talaga. Ganoon nga. Ganoon nga ang ginawa niya. Yun ay positibong opinion. Mangyari pa, o di naman kaya ang salitang sadya. Ang negatibong opinion ay gumagamit ng ngunit, subalit, habang, at samantala. Ngayong Nalaman mo na ang mga ekspresyong ginagamit sa pagpapahayag ng katotohanan at opinion na katitiyak akong kayang-kaya mo nang sagutin ang mga gawain. Kayang-kaya mo, di ba? Inuulit ko, hindi masamang magpatulong sa iba, ngunit dapat mong tandaan na lubos kang masaya sa isang bagay na talagang pinaghirapan mong isagawa. Kaya, maalala mo pa ako, selfie muna, di ba? Bago ka pumunta sa call your family, chat a friend, call or text me, di ba? Saan text lang ako eh? O ano, pwede na tayong magpatuloy? Maraming salamat ha! Muli, ang iyong guro, Corazon Villena. Bye! Great morning, learners. Welcome to our second session with representative elements, but this time with its compounds. What compounds are formed when family A elements combine? This blank periodic table will guide us to determine the location of the elements that belongs to representative elements. All elements that are placed in the colored blue cubes belong to representative elements. The elements found at the middle are called transition metals 
which you will later learn as you proceed to higher grades. Before we discuss further, let us look at first the focus of this discussion. We shall focus our discussion with number one, trace the possible combinations of familiar representative elements. Then, we shall explore the combining capacity of the representative elements. Let us now look at the elements that belong to the representative groups which can form common compounds. What do you notice with this periodic table? Yes, there are positive and negative numbers above each column. The positive one above column one speaks of the number or the capacity of the element to combine, meaning to say it can donate one electron so that a compound will be formed. For elements below family 2A, they have positive 2. This means they can donate two electrons to another element so they will form compounds. And so with the rest of the elements. Let's have an example. Hydrogen, which belongs to family 1A, has one electron to donate. When electron of hydrogen combines with oxygen, they form H2O, or water molecules. That is why you have there two below H because it needs to donate two electrons which oxygen will also accept. Another example of an element that comes from family 1A is Na or sodium. It has an atomic number of 11, but it can only donate one electron as indicated by positive 1 above the column. When sodium combines with one electron of chlorine, they form a compound we commonly call salt. So salt is an example of a compound which is formed by the combination of a representative element. Salt is a common compound which is formed from the combination of two representative elements. What makes it possible for these elements to combine? As we have said, they combine because of the presence of electrons that can be donated and accepted by these elements. Let's have an example of this using formula. So when hydrogen, which has positive one, meaning to say it can donate one electron, combines with two electrons of oxygen, it needs two hydrogen to form the two molecule of water. Another example using the symbols, we have sodium combining with chlorine, needing one electron, they will form sodium chloride. You notice with this formula that there are no more numbers as a subscript. It is simply because the positive and negative will cancel out. In this symbol, you can no longer see subscripts. Why? It is simply because sodium donated one electron and chlorine accepted one electron. So there is no need to write the subscript of one. What have you noticed with the combining capacity of the representative elements? We have here a definition of the combining capacity. An element's combining capacity is the number of electrons it needs to gain or loss in order to gain or attain stable ion. It is also the subsequent ionic charge that the element possess. Take note that the combining capacity 
will be used later on to predict chemical formulas, so it is essential that you know how to figure them out, just like what we have done in the example. Let's go back once more to our periodic table. So this is our periodic table. The positive 1 and the positive 2 are the metals that loses electrons. For positive 3 or elements under family 3A, they also lose electrons. For 4A family up to 7A family, these are nonmetals who gain electrons. So this is the combining capacity of the elements. It is also known as the ionic charge of elements. Let's again use these examples. You notice with the formula formed by this compound, which is lithium oxide. Lithium has a subscript of 2 because it needs to donate 2 electrons while oxygen has no subscript because it accepted two electrons. The same with sodium and chlorine. When they form the compound sodium chloride, there is no more subscript when their symbols are written. The formula shows that the element's combining capacity refers to the number of electrons that needs to gain or lose in order to become stable. So you notice salt now is a stable compound. That is why we can hold it. I hope you will enjoy learning more of the combining capacity of the representative elements in your module. Good luck and thank you. Hi, good morning guys. I hope you are safe and eager to continue learning despite this pandemic. I am Shaila Kawang, your Arts 9 module developer, which focuses on Western arts traditions. This module was developed for Benguet Division. In your previous module, you had learned a lot. You were able to describe, determine, and compared the characteristics of artworks produced in the different art periods. Definitely, you enjoyed answering the activities given in your previous module, right? Now, it's time for you to finish the race for arts grade 9. Try to recall the discussions on the different topics of arts grade 9 from the Western classical art tradition. The types of arts, namely painting, sculpture, and architecture of the ancient art. That includes painting from the early ages and Egyptian era. Classical art, we have the Greek and Roman eras. And lastly, the medieval periods. We likewise have the Byzantine, Romanesque and Gothic eras. In this module, you will produce your desired output through the guided activities so as to master the competency which is to apply different media techniques and processes to communicate ideas, experiences, and stories showing the characteristics of Western classical art traditions. If we go further, art's output explains the languages of emotions an individual is experiencing, all walks of life, 
May it be the joyous and saddest part of his life experience. It is evidently shown that arts are connected to our everyday moves. To add with, it distresses, it is developed as pastime, and it could increase your personal self-esteem. May it be painting, creating things that can satisfy your wants, inventing musical pieces that include singing and dancing to the maximum of your likes, and creating output using media techniques, utilizing the computer world and the likes. This module then will assess and guide you as you apply media techniques in your art. It depends on your own choice on how will you do it, as long as it will communicate ideas, experiences, even your own stories. Using this given picture, you will be making a photomontage activity whereby you can alter, change, add, overlap, rearrange the picture to form a new image that conveys something you wish to imply. Utilize the smaller picture found on the next page for you to come up with a new image. Think of a unique way in creating a quality output. Remember that mirrors what you feel. Work on the other given activities of your photo montage in this module. For sure, you will appreciate your output. For activity number two, which says, I'll decorate my paintings. Utilize the smaller pictures to form a new image and that is exactly a photomontage. Paste it in the new bigger picture. Likewise for activity three, the same procedure as what you did in the previous photomontage. Name and label your output and it is expected to be placed in your accordion folder during the submission date. Criteria and basis of points for your output will be placed in your folder. Please be informed. If you have questions, please call or directly send a private message in my chat box, Kawang Shaded Ju. To end with, love your output, use your time wisely, and work thoroughly. Keep on producing an output through your unique stories, visible in your own art. Good luck, young artist. Stay safe. Hi, good morning guys. I hope you are safe and eager to continue learning despite this pandemic. I am Shaila Kawang, your Arts 9 module developer, which focuses on Western arts traditions. This module was developed for Benguet Division. In your previous module, you had learned a lot. You were able to describe, determine, and compared the characteristics of artworks produced in the different art periods. Definitely, you enjoyed answering the activities given in your previous module, right? Now, it's time for you to finish the race for arts grade 9. Try to recall the discussions on the different topics of arts grade 9 from the Western classical art tradition. The types of arts, namely painting, sculpture, and architecture of the ancient art. That includes painting from the early ages and Egyptian era. Classical art, 
we have the Greek and Roman eras. And lastly, the medieval periods. We likewise have the Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic eras. In this module, you will produce your desired output through the guided activities so as to master the competency which is to apply different media techniques and processes to communicate ideas, experiences, and stories showing the characteristics of Western classical art traditions. If we go further, art's output explains the languages of emotions an individual is experiencing. All walks of life. May it be the joyous and saddest part of his life experience. It is evidently shown that arts are connected to our everyday moves. To add with, it distresses, it is developed as pastime, and it could increase your personal self-esteem. May it be painting, creating things that can satisfy your wants, inventing musical pieces that include singing and dancing to the maximum of your likes, and creating output using media techniques, utilizing the computer world and the likes. This module then will assess and guide you as you apply media techniques in your art. It depends on your own choice on how will you do it, as long as it will communicate ideas, experiences, even your own stories. Using this given picture, you will be making a photomontage activity whereby you can alter, change, add, overlap, rearrange the picture to form a new image that conveys something you wish to imply. Utilize the smaller picture found on the next page for you to come up with a new image. Think of a unique way in creating a quality output. Remember that mirrors what you feel. Work on the other given activities of your photo montage in this module. For sure, you will appreciate your output. For activity number two, which says, I'll decorate my paintings. Utilize the smaller pictures to form a new image and that is exactly a photomontage. Paste it in the new bigger picture. Likewise for activity 3, the same procedure as what you did in the previous photomontage. Name and label your output and it is expected to be placed in your accordion folder during the submission date. Criteria and basis of points for your output will be placed in your folder. Please be informed. If you have questions, please call or directly send a private message in my chat box, Kawang Shaded Ju. To end with, love your output, use your time wisely, and work thoroughly. Keep on producing an output through your unique stories, visible in your own art. Good luck, young artist. Stay safe. Hello, our dear Math Explorer. How are you today? Welcome to another session of Exploring Mathematics. I am Teacher Jomar. At this point of our session, we will be learning how to solve routine and non-routine problems involving division of fractions. Don't worry, I will help you get through the challenging activities. One thing more, you will work together with your learning body. It could be your brother, your sister, your father, 
your mother or any adult who can assist you in answering the different learning tasks in your module. This is the module that you will be using for this session. This is intended for learners in grade 5 like you. You are encouraged to actively engage yourself in exploring the module. Read the directions carefully and do the learning activities provided. Before the main points and activities in your module, make sure to answer first the 10 item test under what I know to measure how much you know about the lesson that we will have. Previously, you learned in your math class on how to solve problems involving multiplication of fractions. Do you still remember the steps you used in answering the problems? Let's have a time with them once more. Here are the steps that we used. First, know what the problem is asking for. Next, identify the given facts. And then, identify the operation to be used. Then write the number sentence. After that, solve and perform the indicated operation. Then state the final answer. How about dividing a fraction? How do we do it? Well, dividing fractions is as easy as pi. Flip the second fraction, then multiply. Oops! Don't forget to simplify before you say goodbye. Let's have this example. We have 4 ninths divided by 2 thirds. So it says there, flip the second fraction. So we will get the reciprocal of 2 thirds. That is 3 halves or 3 over 2. And then after that, proceed to multiplication. So we will have 4 ninths times 3 halves. So we will get 12 over 18. And reducing it to lowest term, we will get 2 thirds. And if you encounter a mixed number, just change it first to improper fraction before going through the process. We will be putting these previous concepts in dealing with our lesson today on solving problems involving division of fractions. Let us have this problem. Harold has three-fourths of a bag of dog food. His dog eats one-tenth of a bag per week. How many weeks will the food last? Before we go back to the step-by-step -step process of solving the problem, let's analyze it. The problem clearly asks how many one-tenth will fit to three-fourths. Let us use a model to see the problem clearly. So we have here three-fourths. And we have one-tenth. Now, how many one-tenth fits to three-fourths? Remember that our equation is Remember that our equation is 3 fourths divided by 1 tenth equals n. So 1 tenth is our second number. So how many of our second number fits to our first number? So let's try to see it. How many 1 tenth fits to 3 fourths? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven and one half based from the model the food will last for seven and one half weeks now let's consider using the steps if we will arrive at the same answer again the situation is harold has three-fourths of a bag of dog food his dog eats one-tenth of a bag per week how many weeks will the food last? So the problem clearly asked for the number of weeks the food will last. And the given facts are 3 fourths of a bag of dog food and 1 tenth of a bag per week. The operation that we are going to use will be division. Because we know and it is clearly stated in the problem 
how many one-tenth are there in three-fourth? After that, we will have the number sentence. In this case, it is three-fourth divided by one-tenth equals n. Now we are ready to solve. That is three-fourth divided by one-tenth equals n. Flip the second number, so we will have three-fourth divided by 10 over 1 equals n. Then proceed to multiplication. 3 fourth times 10 over 1 equals 30 over 4. 30 over 4 is an improper fraction. So we will make it as a mixed number. So that is 7 and 2 fourths. 2 fourths can be reduced to lowest term. That is 1 half. So we will have 7 and 1 half. So, stating the final answer, we will have the food will last for seven and one half weeks. Let us consider another problem. A baker has five and one fourth pies in her shop. She cut the pies in pieces that are each one eighth of a whole pie. How many pieces of pie does she have? Again, just like what we did in the first problem, we may follow the steps to solve it or we may use a model. This time, let's try to use the steps first. Using the steps, we say the number of pies the baker has is what the problem is asking for. The given facts, we have five in one fourth pies and one-eighth of a whole pie. What is the mathematical operation to be used? That is division. And the number sentence combining our given facts and our operation, that is five and one-fourth divided by one-eighth equals j. Then solve. Five and one-fourth divided by one-eighth equals j. This time, five and one-fourth is a mixed number. So to be able to perform the operation, we need to change it first to improper fraction. That is, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1, we got 21 over 4, divided by 8 over 1 equals j. 21 divided by 4 times 8 over 1 equals 168 over 4. Reducing it further, 168 divided by 4 is equal to 42. So the baker has 42 pieces of pies. This time, we are going to use a model. We have here the illustration of 5 and 1 fourth. And then we have 1 8. Now, how many 1 8 fits and 5 over 4? Well, just count how many yellow blocks are found in our third column. So counting it, we will have 42. So the baker has 42 pieces of pies. Wow, you are on the right track. I know you can do the next set of activities in your module. Read the directions carefully and finish all the tasks presented in the module. Good luck and have a wonderful time accomplishing the activities.